In northern Kenya's Tuganyatya Hills, 59 competing cars and their teams arrive for the 2011 Rhino Charge event. These Rhino Chargers are about to exert their daring, can-do attitude to one of the most difficult courses in Rhino Charge history. Teams have spent months raising the charitable funds that secure them a coveted position. And now, what's left is to face the day-long competition that may make or break them. Team 48 is exhausted and about to arrive at the gauntlet. 48. It's mid-morning and they're making excellent time. That is, if they can get out of their car. The gauntlet is the ultimate challenge. Competitors can take a direct line between checkpoints or they can go around. But if they take the challenge of a direct line, they have a better chance of winning. Team 48 has the gauntlet well under control. Africa remains the most rugged landscape for off-road challenges in the world. The Rhino Charge is such a successful fundraiser because it's conceived a fun way to raise cash. And lots of it for conservation. With the Aberdeer fence now in place since 2009, an independent assessment report was completed this year, outlining the impact of the fence on the Aberdeer ecosystem and fence line communities. The report's conclusive findings state that indigenous forest cover has increased by 20.6% since the year 2005. That was the year when illegal logging peaked and only one third of the fence was built. Wildlife populations are on the increase in many areas. Aberdare river flows are reported more stable and less silted than Mount Kenya rivers, a fact attributed to better land cover in the ecosystem. Human wildlife conflict, especially with elephant and buffalo, has reduced considerably. And household incomes and food security have improved for fence line farmers and their children are able to attend school without interruption from marauding wildlife. And finally, the report confirms that a stable area, now three times the size of the gazetted Aberdeer National Park, is now enabling wildlife and all biodiversity to flourish, which provides a stable foundation for further tourism investment. So, farmers are richer, river flows are improving, and forest and wildlife more secure, all because of the Aberdare fence line that the Rhino Chargers helped to build. At first glance, this year's gauntlet looks easy, but as the day wears on, the spectators are not to be disappointed. There are surprise traps everywhere. As car 38 discovers, the loose shale makes driving more like sledding in unexpected places. And 39 finds this wall of razor edge rocks a potential nightmare. And if going downhill doesn't almost tip your car over, then getting uphill is almost impossible. In fact, getting stuck somewhere in the gauntlet is almost a certainty for most of the chargers trying to take the shortest line through the course this year. Parts are just so steep that competitors can hardly walk up the incline themselves.
First timers, car 22, bravely decide to take the most difficult route up. So far, they're midway through their charge and hope to make it to their last checkpoint. just squeeze through. dirt somewhere on the gauntlet, Team 47 rolls up looking extremely clean and composed. Known as the Girls with Pearls, this team has done almost every charge since the beginning and have nothing to prove. Quite good, rough. They will take the ladylike road around the gauntlet because for them, winning isn't everything. As another old timers team, car 45 leaves the gauntlet. They decide to enjoy the afternoon a bit and You're traveling with easy. the guys with the ties. Good. It was just a crazy idea to the ladies with pearls. We wanted to be with the guys with ties, but we forgot to bring some of them. <laughs> We've only ended up with two. <laughs> the next year we'll do better. It's a start. It's a work in progress. I like the name. It's a work in progress, absolutely. Are they your main competitors, the girls with pearls? Absolutely. At one stage we were guys we with ties eating pies. <laughs> a few kilometres away, car five is working a tight line staying right on their course. They're also old timers to the charge, but these guys are seriously competitive. Not only do they nearly always come in among the top ten finishers, they hold the record for raising the most amount of money each year for the last eight consecutive years. About a million US dollars so far. And although everyone wants to win the charge each year, the real reason the charges are here is to raise lots of money for Kenya's environment. Kenya has five main water towers, and each one of them is vital to the well-being of all Kenyans, today and for future generations. Protecting Kenya's main water towers is urgent, and Rhino Ark is now committed to the fencing of Mount Kenya and the Mao Forest Complex's Mount Iburu. Mount Kenya is a UNESCO World Heritage Site considered one of the most impressive landscapes of Eastern Africa with its rugged, glacier-clad summits, Afro-Alpine moorlands and diverse forests, all of which illustrate outstanding ecological processes. The Mount Kenya fence will encircle over 2,000 square kilometers and will be at least 400 kilometers long, equal to or longer than the Aberdares fence. It'll need one billion Kenya shillings to build and can be completed in five years. The water towers of Mount Kenya and Aberdares are the source of four of Kenya's largest river systems, providing water and energy to millions of Kenyans. The Mao's Mount Iburu has 80 square kilometers of pristine forest and needs urgent protection from illegal logging and human encroachment. It's a subsurface water catchment for Lake Naivasha and Lake Elementaita and will need 50 kilometers of fence line and 100 million shillings to build. Both fences will be built at the same time and as long as the funds are raised, they should both be completed within five years. <laughs> 